when we import a sample from Edison or our sample library into FL Studio, by default, it actually opens up inside a plugin. Now, it might not appear that that is the case, but actually this here is a plugin called Sampler. Quick bit of navigation. It shows the file that's currently hosted just here. As you can see, we just dragged and dropped this, but we could go and select any other file because it does just work as a sampler, it is an instrument. Below where we've got content, we've got load regions, keep on disk, resample, load slice markers. Keep on disk is really useful for large samples. If we've got a really long piece of audio, it can stream it for the hard drive instead of putting it in the RAM. By default, FL Studio puts everything into your RAM. Load regions, so remember, in Edison where we tagged the different regions um, with the key for example this would allow those regions to show up and we can see some of them showing up here from this sample if I turn it off they disappear simple as that slice markers is a similar thing for when we've sliced up drum samples they can show up as the slice markers Declicking mode, there's a couple of different modes. If we're careful in getting our zero crossings, it shouldn't really occur. Um, when we play multiple notes though, it makes use of these. So if we do transient no bleeding, most of the time that's gonna be okay. We've then actually got the time stretch settings just here as well. And when we time stretch in the playlist, it actually does make a difference adjusting these. Remember, we looked at the different modes in that video. We've then got some pre-computed effects and we'll dip into those shortly. Up here in the top section, we've also got a settings menu and this sort of settings menu allows us to build an instrument using this sampler and it's really simple to do. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can take a sample and make it into an instrument that we can play a melody with.